let's go over what I consider the top 10 hardest questions on the January 2024 Regents exam. Hopefully you're getting ready for your Regents exam and you're looking for the tough questions. Most of these pertain to some sort of mathematics, but don't worry, you got this, you can do it, and let's check it out. Starting with question 33 here, we're talking about 8% error question. Reference table T has the percent error equation that you're going to need, and we're dealing with a student value of 9.46. You're even told to go to reference table S to find the actual value for the density of copper, which is 8.96. What we need to do is for percent error, we have the true value or the difference between the 8.96 and the 9.46 now the key here is the actual value needs to be in the denominator that's the 8.96 times 100. use absolute value on the top because it doesn't matter if it's a negative or positive it just means where it falls on either side of the value so 8.96 minus 9.46 you get 0.5, you're going to divide that by 8.9 and multiply by 100, and the answer is 5.6, which in the case of 33 is choice 4. So that is a percent error calculation. Let's move on right next door, or actually underneath, at question 34. What is the gram formula mass for magnesium nitrate? And what I tell my students anytime you're going to do a grand formula mass is to list the elements in the formula, the number of times they appear in the formula. Now for magnesium, that's only once. But this little two on the outside, I have to distribute to the nitrogen. So two times one is two. And for oxygen, two times three is six. Find the masses for the individual elements on the periodic table. Now we just go ahead, multiply them out and then add them up. Don't trust yourself. I don't even trust myself. Grab your calculator. Make sure you're doing everything slowly and methodically. You don't make a mistake. You're going to get 148, and that is choice three. Remember, number of times the element appears in the formula, the mass is off of the periodic table. Multiply them out and add them up. I would recommend any kind of math problem. Write it down on the test to avoid making mistakes. From here, we are going to question 40. We're asked about molarity of a solution that has 0.125 moles of sodium hydroxide and 0.2 liters of water. A lot of times what happens is students will get confused because of the word mole. Let's go to reference table T so you don't get confused. The word mole shows up twice. It shows up under mole calculations, and it also shows up with molarity, with moles of solute divided by liters of solution. Just make sure that you know the values that you're given and the units that go along with it in order to pick the right formula. In our case, the concentration form. We got molarity is equal to moles divided by liters, 0.125 moles divided by 0.2 liters, put it in the calculator. A lot of students would just say, oh, I'm going to divide it in half, and they'll make a mistake. The answer is 0.625, or choice three. We have three questions down, the hardest ones from the January 2024 Regents exam, seven to go. And the two on this page that we're going to go over, I think, were, quote, unquote, the most difficult. For 51, what are we talking about here? We're determining the molecular formula from an empirical formula and the molar mass or gram formula mass. The reason why this is difficult, it's a three-step problem. If you forget those steps, you might make a mistake. But you're here, you're on it, you're not going to make a mistake. You're going to get this right. Let's go through it. Well, the empirical formula has all the elements and the lowest whole numbers for the molecular formula. 
In other words, there's some multiplier to go from empirical formula to molecular formula. In order to find it, you're going to need the molar mass or gram molar mass of the empirical formula first. You have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. You have one carbon, two hydrogens, one oxygen. Just like any other gram formula mass or molar mass, you're going to multiply by the masses off of the table, the periodic table, and then add them up. So we got 12 plus 2 plus 16. And what do we have here? 6, 8, 10. We have 30. So 30 is the molar mass for the empirical formula. That's step number one. Step number two, let's put a one here, is to take our molar mass of 180, and we're going to divide that by 30. And we're going to get some value or factor that we're going to multiply through the empirical formula. So 180 divided by 30, and we get a factor of 6. So that 6 now gets multiplied through our empirical formula. Our molecular formula then is C6H12O6. And that's the final step, and that's your answer. Moving on, 53. 53 is a little tricky because you're missing one of the components that you need. So it says determine the mass of a sample of iodine that has a volume of 2.5 centimeters cubed at room temperature and standard pressure. Well, you might think, well, gee, am I using the combined gas law, but I don't have everything. Or, you know, it's asking about the mass of sample. Iodine is a solid at room temperature. Well, what you got to remember is you have the density formula. D is equal to M over V. And the density wasn't given here. Why? Because it's on reference table S. They didn't lead you to S. You have to know that you have to go there. When you go to reference table S and you find the density of iodine, it's 4.933. And that's grams per centimeter cubed. That's going to be equal to the mass, which is X, divided by 2.5. So all I have to do is i got to get X alone. That means 4.933 times 2.5. And the answer here for 53 is 12 grams. Now, if you don't think those are hard, then the last five are going to be easy for you. Let's check them out. For 64, we're asked to determine the concentration of HCl using the titration data. Well, the equation that we're dealing with here is on reference table T, and it's the molarity times the volume of the acid is equal to molarity times the volume of the base. We're looking for concentration. If we go back here and look at the reading passage, I don't know what the molarity of the acid is, but I know my volume is 30 milliliters. The base is the KOH, and it's 0.1 for the concentration and 18 milliliters for the volume. Now I'm going to solve for M. So it's 0.1 times 18, which is 1.8. That divided by 30, and we get 0 0.06 molar as our answer. 0 0.06 molar, again, is our answer. Moving right down to 65 for the next question. Compare the hydroxide ion concentration in 0.1 molar KOH to the hydroxide ion concentration in a neutral solution. Well, you have to make sure you know the difference between a hydrogen ion, hydroxide ion, and the um, hydronium ion. Hydroxide ion, remember that's OH minus. When you have more OH minus than you do H plus, you have a base. KOH is a base. So anytime you have a base, even just a drop in water, you have something on the basic side, which means the pH is higher. When you have a neutral solution, your hydroxide and your hydrogen ion concentrations are equal. All right, so here, my hydroxide ion concentration for a base is definitely higher than a neutral solution. That's all you're looking for there, but I could see a student 
getting confused because of the word hydroxide. We're checking out question 69. Show a numerical setup for calculating the percent composition by mass of oxygen in sodium hydrogen carbonate. Well, you got to find the sodium hydrogen carbonate. What you're told right here is the NaHCO3. A setup means you're going to just show the, the numbers, the math, without actually calculating the answer. Percent is always part over the whole thing. So just P over W times 100. And the part is the oxygen. Now here you got to be careful. The oxygen part is not just 16. It's 16 times 3 because it's in the equation, um, not in the equation, in the formula three times. We want to put 48 in the numerator. The gram formula mass was given, so we don't even have to figure that out for sodium hydrogen carbonate. It's 84, but please don't forget, you got to multiply by 100 because it's a percent composition problem. So percent is equal to 48 divided by 84 times 100. There's your answer. We're going to do a bonus question and that's question 70 or question 70 it says determine the number of moles of k2co3 produced when 3.5 moles of ko2 completely reacts represented in equation one what i like to do these are mole mole problems put the 3.5 above in this case the ko2 we're looking for the k2co3 moles so we're going to put an x there now with that you have your coefficients which is your ratio there's a four here in front of the ko2 and a two in front of k2co3 and what we've just set up now folks is a nice proportion i got 3.5 divided by four is equal to x divided by two solve for x right that's 4x is equal to three 0.5 times 2 is 7. Divide both sides by 4. And 7 divided by 4, we get 1.75. That is our answer. Let's keep going. All right. We're almost done. We're checking out question 84. We're looking for the fraction of the original sample of the radioactive isotope used to test for thyroid problems that remains unchanged after 24.063 days. Well, I got to figure out what isotope it is first. It's got to be the iodine 131. I get that right off the table. And I need the half life for iodine 131. That we need to get from the reference tables. This is the second question in this set where it wasn't written down where you need to find something on those reference tables. So make sure. If you think you're missing something, you probably are. In this case, we need the half-life for iodine, and it's 8.021 days. We got to take that information and go on back. There is always a half-life problem on a Regents exam. You can't get away from it. There's also more than one way to go ahead and figure out the answer. Whatever you're most comfortable with, I'm going to tell you to do. All right, so that's basically the way we roll. I usually use a chart of mass and time with my students. But again, there's plenty of different ways. If you like one way better than another, as long as it's getting you to the right answer, go for it. Since we're dealing with fractions, we're going to just say the mass to start was 1 and our time to start was 0. Now, 8 days and change goes by. Half of that sample has now changed into or decayed into a different isotope. Another eight days goes by, and it's a quarter. All right, so what we're doing is we're having the mass, but we're adding time. We're not doubling it. We're adding 8.021, or I just rounded it to eight days at a time. Another eight days goes by. Now we're at that 24 and now what we have left is an eighth of the original sample and that is our answer all right one more question i totally skipped it by mistake let's go back and take a look at it and it is question i believe 45. i was even wrong with that it's actually question 48. 
Now, this is talking about pH. You might not have ever seen this, but pH is equal to minus the log of the hydrogen ion concentration of a solution. That's actually the mathematical formula. In other words, when the pH changes by one, it changes the concentration of the hyd hydrogen, also known as the hydronium ion, by a factor of, of 10. Now, what I usually do with my students is we'll do a, some sort of number line. Let's check this out. So the pH value of the solution is changed from 6 down to 4. Okay, we know as the pH gets lower, the hydronium ion, also known as the hydrogen ion, concentration gets larger. It gets more acidic. Okay, so in order to go from 6 to 4, you got to go from 5. So we have a factor of 10 increase in the hydronium ion concentration and then another factor of 10. And 10 times 10 is 100. So the hydronium ion concentration increased by a factor of, of 100. I almost said 10, Jeez. okay, which is choice four. Well, that ends what I think are the 10 hardest, actually 11 hardest questions from the January 2024 Regents. Check out other videos, practice questions, go for answers and explanations. Of course, as always, what do I say? Have fun and good luck.